and welcome to the top 10 best regular show episodes. Um, let's talk about regular show for a minute. It's on Cartoon Network and it is actually one of the funniest shows I've ever seen on Cartoon Network. It actually started with 2 in the AM PM, created by J.G. Quintel who used to work on Adventure Time and on Thinking Some Ferb. And this short was created probably in the mid, early mid 2000s. I really can't pin the exact date. Um, let's get some honorable mentions out of the way. Wrap it up and Mordecai and the Rigby's are the honorable mentions because they weren't as funny, but they were funny. Okay. Let's get started. Number 10. First day. Okay, so the episode is basically a recut of the original pilot, which was sent to Cartoon Network. Unfortunately, they didn't take this pilot and they switched it with the piano episode as the pilot. But this was the original pilot and it is very good. I guess what I can just say is... The episode is about Mordecai and Rigby and how they got their jobs at the park. And basically, their first misadventure, which involved Pop's old couch. And them having to play rock, paper, scissors 99 times and not ending up winning. Wow. You would have to be really, really bored to play rock, paper, scissors 99 times and not win one. So, what is it about this episode that I appreciate? Again, it is the original pilot idea that they rehashed it as the extended opening, trimmed some parts out, and the opening itself is freaking incredible. I mean, come on, Kenny Loggins, I'm alright. That's freaking awesome. I mean, using the showman from Caddyshack. That is a good idea. The only problem I think I had was with the ending. I didn't really appreciate the ending. I thought Benson's rage with the ending wasn't as good. I thought he should have been a little more upset since it was their first day. But then again, he probably was being nicer to him since it was their first day. Really, I don't know. But I just tell you, that is a good episode. And I actually recommend that episode for many of you who want to get into the show. Okay, let's move on. Number nine. It's time. This is probably one of the best examples of a TV show doing a good time travel episode. I mean, wow, it was good. The whole episode is revolved around Mordecai getting jealous at Rigby for getting a date with Margaret and over his sense of humor. I mean, how would that equal up to a time travel episode? Well, technically it didn't up until about the last 10 minutes of the episode when Mordecai gets so upset at Rigby that he actually steals all the clocks, puts it in a microwave, puts it on cook, 
thus ending up having them sent back into time, meaning Father Time having Rigby killed, and Mordecai having made his good deeds. Well, not his good deeds, but his jealousy. So, what does Father Time do? He lets Mordecai go back in time to fix everything. Wow. So, he gets on the time pony, which results in a funny scene, but you'll have to see it for yourself. I'm not ruining it for you. It's over the discussion over the time pony. It goes back to the beginning of the episode and decides not to be jealous of Rigby. Again, this is a good example of a time travel episode that works. I mean, it starts you out with a very good plot that should get you to thinking, man, I really either do feel bad for him or he is a jerk. And then it just throws you off by saying, hey, he's going to learn his lesson, go back in time and fix everything. The only thing I didn't really like about this episode was Rigby's attitude. It seemed like he was being cocky. And that's a lot saying that this was basically the second season. I mean, I know Rigby's attitude is that he's sort of a jackass, but he wasn't that much of a jackass in the original show, but here, he was just cocky. But, again, another good episode. I do highly recommend it. I mean, it does really sort of throw the question at you about her Rigby's relationship with Margaret. How does she feel about him? Moving on, number eight. This is sort of a tie between Night Owl and more Smurg. I'll start out with Night Owl. In Night Owl, Mordecai Rigby, High Five Ghost, and Muscle Man enter a contest where they have to stand on top. Let me get this straight. On top of a billboard and the first person who gets off loses their chance to win a classic car. Well, there was about 20 people there. Mordecai, Rigby, High Five, Ghost, and Muscle Man got rid of all of them until it was down to the top four. Well, Let's see, the radio DJ realizes, hey, this is good for my ratings. So what does he do? He freezes them for over 2,000 years. That's right, they wake up in the year 4,422. And they're still on top of there. And then they realize they're in the future. <clears throat> what do they do? They try to get out. But the night owl just keeps trying to get them frozen so that they'll stay longer. Well, what does this result in? Them stealing the car, going to the time machine exhibit in the museum they built somehow in the future, I'm not making this up, and have them go back in time to the beginning of the episode. Sort of follows the same rules as it's time. But this one sort of takes a bigger twist where you don't see the people just flow into themselves in the past. No, they end up meeting themselves in the present. The present selves are sort of shocked and awed. First of all, wouldn't ruin the space-time continuum? Wasn't that one of the rules Doc Brown from Back to the Future told us? That if you met yourself in the past, you sort of ruined time and space for all we know it? Meh. 
never mind. I guess one of the cons I have to say with this episode, though, is that the contest is sort of stupid. Standing on top of a billboard? Who the hell would do that? I mean, seriously, you wouldn't see me standing on top of the damn school roof saying, Hey, I'm gonna win a car! Exactly. But, again, it's a good time trial episode. Just didn't have a good premise, though, for it. You know, the contest. I mean, come on, they could have came up with something better. But again, it's just me. The other episode is more smart, which is part of this tie. This episode is about Rigby getting harassed by Mordecai over his intelligence. Until the point where Rigby buys his miracle juice and drinks it and ends up becoming smarter. Where the hell would that product exist? I would want that product. So, yeah, and this is a funny episode. It does take a shot in reality, though, with Rigby being really stupid. But, I guess what I have to say is that I didn't really like the ending of this episode. The ep ending of this episode didn't really make as much sense. I mean, I know it's Benson's Ray, but it wasn't as bad of a race. Same way the first day. It had a horrible ending. Where it didn't end up in big rage, or it didn't end up in personal rage. But, then again, it is a good episode. Really good that they actually have the ability to say that if you're really, really smart, People around you are really, really freaking stupid. So, that was more smarter in the Night Owl. Again, I couldn't choose between the two, so go with me. Moving on here. But again, I do suggest those. Number seven. Go viral. This episode takes a good beating on YouTube and internet video memes. And I'm mostly saying like, probably the one that can mostly say that they're really taking a shot at are sort of like Fred. You know, Fred... God, I can't think of any other ones that they really be making fun of. But, you know, along those lines of Fred. This episode is about Mordecai Ruby, High Five Ghost, and Muscle Man getting into a bet over who can make a better web video. It ends up resulting in that Muscle Man and High Five Ghost making videos that get over 900,000 views. Really, name one person, one person on Facebook, besides people who are supported by companies, that gets over 900,000 views. Nah, maybe it's just me. I think the only bad thing I have to say with this episode is using the song, Hit Me If Your Best Shot. But I didn't get into the ending yet. So... This episode's ending basically goes that Pops is in one of Mordecai and Rigby's videos, gets sent up into cyberspace, ends up being trapped in a digital domain. Mordecai and Rigby escape with Pops with the help of the... And I'm back. Took a little break right there. Now let's get into the top five Best regular show episodes. Number five Camping can be cool. The re 
reason I put this at number 5 is there are so many good reasons. Number 1, it's a funny episode. Number 2, it was the start of a story arc which is now going on throughout the rest of the third season and into the fourth season as I've heard. But I'm not going to give away the last reason why it's funny and it's on number five. So let me give you the plot. Mordecai and Rigby are planning to go on a camping trip. Elaine and Margaret hear about this and decide that, eh, that'll be cool. So they decide to go on the camping trip with them. This will be Margaret's first time camping. She never went camping before. Didn't any of her ex-boyfriends ever just take her, I don't know, camping? Yeah, maybe I'm just freaking ranting on about this, but never mind. So, they go camping. Mordecai and Rigby tell them that there's a secret spot they're going instead of the campsite, because they hate the campers. So, they have to go to a no-trespassing zone. Wow. That's really breaking the rules there, guys. I mean, it's one thing just to get Benson pissed off, but to break the rules on the law. That's another. But, meh. Moving on. So, they go to this secret spot where it's beautiful and majestic. They see a deer. They, you know explore the woods, they enjoy the beauty of it. And that night, Mordecai and Rigby are basically getting everything set, but they keep forgetting stuff, so the girls have to pitch in. This ends up resulting in Rigby actually thinking that Eileen's very, very cool. Thus starting another story arc, which won't be really compound for another probably season and a half. And at the same time, Mordecai and Margaret's relationship is starting to technically blossom. I don't say it's really blossoming, but it's technically starting its blossom. Well, I've gotten through all the sugary stuff. Let me get to the final reason. So, Mordecai and Margaret are talking, and they're about to start the sort of steps towards romance. Until it starts raining. And they end up seeing a deer. And, here comes the interesting twist. Who plays the deer? No, than Freddy freaking Krueger. That's right, Robert Englund from Nightmare on Elm Street, who played Freddy Krueger, is in this show. Yeah. The minute I found that out, I was like, whoa. That is so freaking cool. That is awesome. So, they're basically being chased around by, technically I could say, Freddy Krueger's deer, until he gets run over on the interstate by the ranger. Was this result in? Well, them leaving and claiming that was very, very cool. Actually, I have no problem with this episode. This is actually a very good episode. Again, with having the guy who played Freddy Krueger on there, a good start of a story arc, and it being a funny episode, it was all that good. I mean, in one other show, that actually got Freddy Krueger besides The Simpsons in one other show. So, I actually highly recommend that episode. 
because it is a very good one. Number four, Weekend at Benson's. This is a good episode for Benson, you know, because it really does focus on Benson, and it's rare that you get those episodes that do focus on him. You know, I'm starting to see him more commonly now, but it's rare, probably in second season, early third season. But it's a good episode. Um, I could probably say, the plot-wise, Benson basically gets unconscious because he falls off a ladder that Mordecai and Rigby were holding. The boys couldn't hold a ladder. Why the hell did you hire them in the first place? If they can't hold the ladder, they can't screw in a bulb. Why did you hire them? Oh yeah, that's right, cheap labor. I forgot about that. Moving on. So, Benson's unconscious and Mordecai and Ray, we have to take him to his house. What's this result in? Them bumping into his neighbor, of course, who is having a party and wishes that Benson could show up. So, Mordecai, being the sap that he technically is, feels bad for her and ends up taking Benson to his party that he was originally planning to go to in the first place. So, Benson goes to his party, flirts with his neighbor, and gets the, the neighbor's ex-boyfriend upset. Wow, you can get him upset by just putting your arm on her knee and saying, it's been a very good time. Wow, this guy has no self-esteem. But, moving on. So this ends up resulting in a chili eating contest. And by this point, Benson's technically still a little unconscious, but he's regaining his consciousness. And he finally does after the competition's over. He realizes what the hell he's been eating. Mordecai and Rigby sort of fill him in a little bit, actually deleting the part where they caused him to get unconscious. And this results in them having to drink the celebratory drink called the Mississippi Queen. This results in probably one of the funniest trippy sequences I've ever seen on television. Mississippi Queen with jalapenos. Just think about that for a minute. <coughs> Mississippi Queen with jalapenos. This would be interesting. And it was. Especially playing Mississippi Queen. Yeah. That was good. Again, the way Benson gets unconscious, that's sort of a little problem. But again, it is a good Benson episode. So we're really focusing on him without really focusing on him. And, again, I sort of recommend it. But still, why did he get unconscious from a ladder? It could have been something else, like a light fixture. But that's probably just me. Number three. Fortune Cookie. This episode isn't bad. It's decent. But the only thing that made me put it on this list was the background moment. Let me get started, though. Basically, Rigby's getting upset that Benson's having all this good luck while he's having all this bad luck. So what does he do? They go to a fortune shop, and he basically switches the fortunes. So that he gets good luck, and Benson gets bad luck. The results are many funny moments of Benson having bad luck, resulting from bees, gangs, 
cars, nature, and money. Mostly money. Yeah, I said money. Benson basically loses his check, loses his house, loses his car, all in the matter of three days. Wow, I wish systems were work like that faster today as well. But basically, probably the funniest moment is when they're all on the bus and Benson couldn't show up, so he decides to walk at the park. He takes one step and again beats the crap out of him for his wallet. That made me laugh my ass off. I guess another thing I should mention is the ending, which is probably one of the biggest twist endings I think I've ever seen. So, supposedly Rigney gets the bad luck because he's had bad luck, right? Wrong. Originally that was supposed to go to Muscle Man. Muscle Man switched fortunes with Rigney, thus causing him to get a video game interview. For a video game he technically wouldn't play in any other episode. Okay, where do I begin? But, it is a good twist ending, I'll give it that. It does have sort of a flaw with it though. Now, like, you could have technically noticed it in the episode, but you really didn't. So you really had to pay attention to that one. So, Fortune Cookie, it's a good episode. I highly recommend this one. Because it probably has one of the funniest montages and one of the funniest background moments ever. Moving on, number two, Cruising. This is a very funny episode, and it is a very good episode. I guess the only thing I have to say about this episode is it's confusing. And what do I mean by confusing? I just mean it was confusing. It had some confusing moments, I'll put it as that. But then again, it again, it's a good episode. It actually has probably one of the funniest endings as well to cut the credits. But I'm not going to give that away yet. Let's start off with the beginning. So basically Mordecai and Greg we see this ad for a new TV show. Which has these two guys who identically look like Mordecai and Rigby as humans who are hitting on chicks. Margaret finds this as a little skeptical, but thus causes Mordecai and Rigby to sort of deny her in the saying, So you think we can't pick up chicks, huh? And thus results in a war. Yeah, that's right. They have a bet over who can pick up the most chicks at night. Basically, Mordecai and Rigby versus Margaret and Aline, <coughs> who is Margaret's friend. Um, so yeah. <laughs> this results in basically them having the golf cart at first, which turns out to be a failure. And then them having to borrow Pop's car. I didn't even know Pop had a car. First of all, if Pop's had a car, why in the holy mother of God in the pilot was he not having a car? Why did he drive the cart in the episode first day? Why? And again, I'm just being skeptical again. So basically, they're driving around, they pick up two chicks, but they don't get their numbers because they were trying to make their boyfriends jealous. Oh, that sounds like another episode, but I'm not.